Welcome and thank you for joining us today. We're Derps and Burps, the podcast for all gamers, spiritual souls, and creative minds out there. Hello, everybody, and welcome back on our podcast. As usual, we have the lovely Steffi here with us. No more uh, stand ins. <laughs> so far, for now. So far, yeah. Two consecutive episodes with Steffi. Wowie. No, I'm acting Sorry. like you're never there. It was literally one episode that you happened. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm <laughs> never here. I'm an asshole. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we 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 missed you, and we hope that you enjoyed the last episode. There was like a full on trash talking episode, or not trash talking, but we were just like fully improvising. And today, yeah, we're back with the topic. So today's topic. Obviously, we're first going to catch up, you know, what's new, who's the listener of the week, all the chisam. Um, But the, the, the big topic of today's podcast is going to be spirituality. What does spirituality mean? Um, what does it mean for us? How did it change our life? How did we get into it? All of that kind of stuff. Um, so we hope that you're into that kind of stuff if you're not yet spiritually awakened or however you want to call it uh, also no problem <laughs> maybe just listen to it maybe it's something that you might get interested in if you're not interested in it at all it's okay you can listen to other episodes like for example the only fans one with kayla <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one no but um should we start with the listener of the week before we catch up uh -huh. with what's new mm -hmm. let's go All right, guys, listener of the week is Gabu Tazme. Nice episode, learned a lot of new things. That was, by the way, episode uh, 18, I think. Mm -hmm. last, last episode, comment to the last episode. Nice episode, learned a lot of new things from you guys talking about Star Wars. Apart from that, I wonder why Hades has both a headset mic and the big mic. Thank you for always uploading a visual podcast for each episode. I personally find it better. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Kabu. Um, first, thank you. I'm happy you learned some stuff about Star Wars. <laughs> When we were talking about it, we didn't re really... Welcome we to the Church of Star Wars. <laughs> You're priest Welcome today. Welcome <laughs> to the Jedi religion. There's actually a religion called Jedi. I was considering to yeah. join Hello? this one. Excuse yes, me? Just so I can it? write it on my paper. I'm not sure, though. I didn't look into it. I just know cool. there's one. Imagine just in your passport or something that says, like, <gasps> Jedi. so cool, right? Jedi Hades. <laughs> Jedi Steffi. <laughs> That's so cool. I, I need to it. I need to look into it though. Okay, well, um, I, I need you to. Yeah. And second, uh the reason why I have two mics like we whenever I stream or we record for the podcast, I obviously use the better mic I have here thanks to blue microphones. Um but I also go or walk a lot around in my apartment no matter if I go on the balcony or a ciggy, or grab a coffee, or go to the toilet. I take my friends everywhere with me. So, and I, I swap to her my... Poop and pee, yeah, and everything. flush, everything. everything. It's good. Yeah, that's how close we are already, mm -hmm. Julia. Mm -hmm. I take you with me everywhere. Listen, so this is like, I, I swap think, to this mic then. I think I've been on the toilet with you pooping more often than with my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I'm not even... <laughs> kidding like the amount of times i didn't even notice like often steph is just in discord with me or, or whatever we're having a call yeah. and then she's like don't be surprised i'm gonna flush now and i'm like wait <laughs> did you just <laughs> were you just on the yeah. toilet you know what yeah. we should do we should uh, record like a special podcast one day where where we're we're sitting on the, on toilet. the toilet sitting on the toilet Like a short a pod, version. A pooping something. podcast episode. <gasps> An actual podcast. You know, sitting a, a podcast. A poop cast. A poop cast. A poop cast. A poop cast. I'll write that down. <laughs> a Life from the toilet. <laughs> Coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know what we could do? We could do that on Instagram. You know how you can do Instagram lives? Oh, and you yeah. Can and then we sit on the toilet shit and talk. <laughs> Can you get can yeah. you get banned for this on I Instagram? So why you're not I showing mean, anything? Yeah, I think I think you should. No, I, mean, I I recorded or I I took or yeah, I made a lot of videos on the toilet already when I responded to awesome. like people of like questions of people in my stories. I just I just filmed myself on the toilet and just responded to it. 
I just want to say whenever it, you got time, right? I just want to say ninety nine percent of the times where I answer anybody doesn't matter if it's social media, <laughs> WhatsApp. It's I answer people when I'm shitting because I'm yeah. a highly efficient person. Listen, I oh. multitask. If I'm cleaning, I'm listening to audiobooks or podcasts. When I'm on the toilet, I'm answering messages. Um, there's no <laughs> free time, right? We need to we need to use the time we have on this planet as yeah. efficiently as possible, right? At least yeah. uh, that's how, how I see it. <laughs> and um, there was also the toilet. there was also a second um, a second comment on the video that I saw from yeah, Stoney which we that enraged you. <laughs> Steffi, Steffi told me, listen, Stoney, for the people that don't know, Stoney is our stream daddy. Um, actually, dad, he's actually our dad. No, not really our dad, but but he's one of the older members of our community. He's a super, super lovely guy. And I yeah. always say for fun. He was a lovely was guy. Till, till, till today. <laughs> till till today. We, till Steffi saw the, the comment. Uh, for me, no judgment. You're still my dad. Uh, Stoney is fine. <laughs> um, but he said that Star Wars is dead, and that 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 did I say that <laughs> dead, dead dead dead? Oh my god, that's confusing. So many deaths and death <laughs> and oh my god. Anyway, he said that Star Wars is dead, and that and since Rich, Disney definitely. owns it, which I partly agree, but Stony no. We don't talk about the sequels because the sequels are shit. We all know that. But everything else they brought out with Daddy Filoni Daddy is Filoni. insane. Mandalorian. Mandalorian is good. Boba I Fett is shit. okay. <laughs> Boba Fett is But he has cool. Baby Yoda. Kinda. Everybody loves Baby Yoda. What's his name again, Grogu. sir? Grogu. Grogu, exactly. Grogu. Why? Baby Yoda. Grogu. Can I ask why... Does Yoda have two names? Is Yoda Yoda is... doesn't have two names. It's wait, not Yoda. Wait, that's not Yoda? No. This is literally it... the second time in the Star Wars universe that we Yee! see the same no! like Yoda species. Yes, that's not oh, Yoda. I, I, it's just, I didn't watch Mandalorian. Everybody's just like, in oh, the it's beginning. Baby, it's baby Yoda. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, because okay, we didn't like know his name. Yoda or some shit. Nah, we didn't know his name until like late first episode second episode second uh, second season when <gasps> sorry for the spoilers guys it's if it's you fine. haven't if watched, you haven't watched it yet, now, it's fine it's I haven't watched, it's fine. um since ahsoka takes place or like uh, uh, di uh the disappears Happens. appears uh since ahsoka appears uh, when ahsoka appears in mandalorian we get to know his name, and until then, everyone called him Baby Yoda. Oh, see, yeah. I learned something again. So he's yeah. not Yoda. Did, no, does he's he not meet Yoda. Yoda in Mandalorian? Or is we Yoda don't know not yet. No, 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 no. We don't know anything yet. We just know how old he is. He's like 50 plus. Okay. Um, so that's really young. Age because Yoda is, uh, is a lot yeah. of... Yeah, yeah. Yoda is he really old. A few hundred years. 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 Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, and we don't know much yet. We don't know if they ever get to meet each other or if they met already. We don't know where Grogu was um, Maybe it's the when son Order of Yoda? 66 happened. Yeah, that's a theory wait, that wait, Yoda wait, had wait, a wait. wife. Hold up. Hold up. What is Order 66? Order 66 is what you played. It's the third movie when Anakin gets wait. controlled. My brother, Finally, my brother has a clothing line, right? Uh huh. And his clothing line is called Order Sixty Six. Really? Yes. I had. He's no... a huge Star Wars fan. Wait, what? I need to. I need to ask him. I. I need yeah. to ask him. Like, what the fuck? Wait, what? What yeah. is it exactly from Star Wars? I'm Order him 66 right now. Order Sixty Six is when the Jedi get wiped. Oh my god. When the Sith take over and the Jedi get get basically wiped. I'm asking Not him right now. Was. I didn't know that he's, yeah, he's do a it. Star Wars man. I'm gonna. Uh, Vada, bist du ein <laughs> großer Star Wars Fan? I mean, that would be a very big coincidence yeah. if he wasn't. So I think. Sure. <laughs> ich schreibe, bin jetzt erst drauf gekommen, dass Order 66 ist. <laughs> Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> that you would played be funny. that already. 
but I think I don't know. Like in the game, it didn't say anything about Order sixty six. Is that like the also the Befehl, or the, or what? Or what does order it, mean? Like in a in a German sense, the order is like what Palpatine says is execute Order sixty six, and then oh, okay, every clone okay. turns into this war machine, and they all kill everyone. Oh my god! Now I, dude, I did not know. Yeah. Freaking Star Wars I'm pretty Wars sure reference. he's a big fan. Probably. He, yeah. Or, like, he has it together with his friend. Yeah. So I'm just... just I want, can you send me the link, please? I want to check his stuff yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, well... Um, so, for now, um, they're just <coughs> making... They're making um, clothing for... For uh, kids right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I That's think nice with I Order 66. Have... That's so hurtful. I got. Oh my god. That's Ma- not okay. <laughs> Maybe they're programming like the little children to. Never mind. I can't go that far. That's 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 not okay with everything that happens to the Padawan. <laughs> um, it's really cute. So for now, it's like children's clothing. Um, for people, they're like, "Oh, why children? Cl- children clothing? That's a little bit weird." Um, so, so macabre. What's macabre? Uh, so actually, good question. Like, it's oh it's, my god, that is <laughs> that is a tough one. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, uh, where the sixty six new children clothing out now? <laughs> but if he doesn't know, oh my god. if he doesn't know. That, that would be fucking hilarious. He knows. Like, I, I'm 100% sure. Otherwise, you wouldn't call your brand Order 66 and make fucking cheering clothing. <laughs> How much of a fucking evil person can you be? <laughs> Holy shit. Wait, is he programming the children so so they take over? Him? Morbid. Morbid horrible. Morbid. No, yeah, but I can't even talk about this, <laughs> this one scene because this is what gives me PTSD. So because it rips open all my wounds and it hurts me so much as someone of my dearest friends died it's like when Aww. you have watched the third movie right yeah yeah when any king goes in i can't even talk about it when any king goes Aww. into the jedi temple and all the little kids are hiding and then this little boy says master we're surrounded what shall we do and he's like i can't talk about it and Aww. you see the hope and the fear of the like in in their eyes of the children and he just kills everyone oh this is this now nah, yeah oh i'm sorry i didn't uh, i didn't know what i was getting and into. then your brother is making a child brand. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god okay <laughs> oh. Okay, I, 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 I ripped open a can of worms. Interesting. <laughs> this is <laughs> not literally. I, I cannot. This is why I hate George Lucas and love him at the same time. Because the amount of pain he causes me or caused me with all this is insane. I still don't understand why it touches me so, so much. But I think uh, well, that's what a good movie <laughs> is, right? Like if it, I know, yeah. If if it makes you feel something, like it's just kids are so innocent, you know. And then, yeah, uh, I feel it's just a movie. It's just no, a movie. it's not. Oh, <laughs> uh. um, what what I wanted to say though, um, that is that's actually really interesting. I I do. I'm. Are you a person that gets really touched by many movies like that? That yeah, I guess it gets same. Cause. Like I, when I'm into or when I'm intrigued, um, I feel with it as if I was there. And mm-hmm. that's a funny thing. Like Bass, for example, mm-hmm. our friend never really understood why. For for example, in Star Wars, like everything touches me so much. It's because it, it means a lot to me. Yeah. And then when M and Bass were here and Alex, we were all watching something together on the couch. Mm-hmm. And I'm a person like I'm. I'm feeling it. I'm into it. I am You're living empathetic. whatever I watch. Yeah, yes. Same. The and same. then he was right next, uh, sitting right next to me and just looked at me and said, now I understand why, why you feel that way in Star Wars, because you're actually, you're living this. And he's a very, like, I'm a very emotional person, right? And Bas mm. is more, like, ra- rational. So he never understood... Rational. My, uh, rational. My <laughs> behavior, like, towards these things. And then that was... When that was the moment when it finally clicked in in his <laughs> head, and he understood why I'm I'm watching why movies this, way? this yeah. way, yeah. And that was such a nice moment of realization for both of us. That's really so. Yeah, nice. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very living it. If I 
if I, if super, it means a lot to me. It's super interesting because something similar happened with Nathan and me. That mm-hmm. was when we, I mean, it sounds a little bit stupid, but that's when we found out that Nathan is autistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say that. Um, but so I'm also really, really um, empathetic. Like if I watch yeah. a video, like a, a video or a movie or a TV show or something, I always cry. So for example, Nathan and me, we watched the show or we watched together um, The Good Doctor. So The Good Doctor mm-hmm. is about a doctor that has autism and has problems understanding um, the feelings and a lot of like social constructs and doesn't understand mm-hmm. why other people react in certain ways, right? Because he's autistic and mm-hmm. he doesn't understand the social um, thing, right? And uh, every single episode, I was crying beside of one. So there's always mm-hmm. like this medical story, you know, where somebody's super sick or like a child dies yeah. or you need to decide between two people, you know, that kind of thing. Um mm-hmm. And I was crying every single episode with like this this fun little thing like okay are you gonna cry this episode again and as I said so far every episode but one I cried yeah um and I think after we watched two or three episodes uh, Nathan actually said listen this is the first movie or show ever where I can empathize like I can it's think relate. myself or re- I can relate with a character in the show yeah and that was the guy that was uh, autistic and that's actually how we realized that he was autistic and he started um, going to a therapist to get tested for autism. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, fun thing. <coughs> That's how, how it was for us as well. Yeah, but I'm the same. Like, there's certain movies that just bring... Like, sometimes it's not necessarily the... Um, I don't know if you're the same. Not necessarily, like, the emotion that the, the movie brings out in you. But I have, mm-hmm. for example, with certain movies or series that I watched when I was in a certain point in my life, I have the same with music, that once I rewatch the movie or hear the music, it brings me back emotionally to a place in my life where I was. I don't know if you have Sorry that. for the interruption, if you hear We can't hear cars. it. No, we can't okay, hear okay. it. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, um, actually, that's funny because I, I don't really have that. I When I hear a song that was something or meant something to me uh, in the past. I hear that song, but I do not feel the same anymore because I'm, I, I, I do not feel the same anymore now. So it doesn't bring me back to this moment and I mm-hmm. don't really get nostalgic, nostalgic about anything unless it's something very uh, dramatic that happened yeah. in my life. Yeah, like, same. for example, my aunt, uh, my, 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 my grandma died. So Over the Rainbow, the song... That's one of Aww. one of the songs. Whenever I hear the song, it reminds me of my of my grandma because I was at that time at Ben's place in in Styria when I was a child. I was twelve, I think, and I always spent my Easter holidays over at his place. So I was there, and the song played when his dad brought me back to Corinthia because uh, because I got to know that my my grandma died. So. This is one thing. It it must be very, very, very like a very extreme feeling, right? Crucial um, event that happened to me that me meant a lot to me, or was like just was a moment where I felt a lot. But everything that ha- has to be or had to be with a person I was in love with or mm. anything else doesn't mean anything to me. Okay, it's more like very, very, very. Uh, Mostly family stuff, actually. Okay. Yeah. For me, I have like three or four things like this. Like I have one song, um, yeah. of a friend of mine, um, that. So basically, it was a friend of mine that I was, fr- like, we were friends for a long time. Mm-hmm. He was playing in a band, so we. He was always making music, and there was this song that he was singing. I remember us as friends being together in a circle. He was like playing it on a guitar. He was singing. Yeah. With it. And um, he actually committed suicide a few years ago. And then mm-hmm. at his funeral, they played that song that he played. So oh God, now okay, that, yeah. every time I hear that song, for example, like I instantly have to cry. Or yeah. um, Okay, that's connected with a very, very deep feeling. Yes, that's, so, I but that's crazy. That. And like sometimes, you know, on Spotify, you have like this... Um, you know, start a radio from a song or whatever, and then like it brings up songs that you like or mm-hmm. listen before they're similar. Mm-hmm. And um, 
like it happens sometimes that that song just randomly starts playing in my playlist or whatever on Spotify and I'm like <gasps> like it's like literally choking me like it doesn't matter yeah. if I'm playing a video game and I'm like full on raging or whatever like as soon as as soon as, soon as the, the tune starts like it's literally like cutting off my, my ear yeah. kind of it's, yeah. it's really weird and I have like two more things that come to my mind it is like one of my favorite movies um it's i think we talked about it before the eternal sunshine of a spotless mind i, ha I still haven't I still watched haven't it. watched yeah. it steffi please write it down i, still I have my... two weeks off now of irl work i might yeah. find some time yeah. yeah 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 please write it down watch yeah. it you will not regret it it's literally so good so again yeah. for people that didn't hear it it's uh, a serious movie a, a really sad love story about uh with with jim carrey it's one of the serious movies of of jim carrey um and it's my favorite all-time movie and i watched it like 30 times and basically when i watched that movie the first time was when i broke up with like my my true love whatever when i was like young when i was a teenager mm -hmm. and and that's when i watched it and we were like in a i talked about it before like on off relationship and like every time we broke up I would watch it again because in the movie it's basically about um people being in a relationship loving each other then they try like they're in the movie there's something that you can erase your memory mm. they would both erase the memory but they would always find each other Get again and fall again, in love yeah. again and then would break each other's hearts and so it's like the circle of they're meant to be but they're not mm. you know so good um, for each other yeah 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 exactly so uh, I would always watch that and <laughs> we broke up so many times that like it was like every time I'm I'm like depressed or sad or I missed him or something like that I kind of in my own head like I, I think he doesn't even know the movie like I never watched that movie mm -hmm. for him but in my mind that is like that was like our relationship if that makes sense yeah so, like I, I sometimes watch it again and every time I watch it it like brings me back to that place but mm -hmm. even though I don't feel the same for that person anymore, mm -hmm. it can bring me right back to that exact person I was. So it makes me, while I watch yeah. it, it makes me feel like I'm like, I don't know, 19 again. And you can like, time travel, Julia. Do you yes. know that? Yeah, yeah, it's literally like this. Like feeling like, emotionally wise. It may, emotional time traveling. And it's so weird because like, I, I've not really been... Like, obviously, like, I'm in a relationship for eight years that I'm really happy yeah. in right now, right? So I'm not used to, like, having any drama or, or, or yeah. anything or breakups or something. Yeah. And I don't know. It's, like, a weird thing. But sometimes you just long, like, feeling something again if you're, like, in, a, in like, in a boring kind of situation. And then I just tune that, that movie on and, like, I cry for an hour straight and I turn it off and I'm fine again. But it's just like, <laughs> it's like this, this weird yeah, yeah. emotional roller coaster. Like the all the the weird hormones that probably get released that give you like this <laughs> weird kick. So I guess that's the one kind of thing. And then I have a song as well that was kind of like the breakup song for me back then, you know. And when I hear <laughs> that song as well, it does the same. It does the same thing for me. So I have those two things as well. But yeah, it's 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 really weird. As I say, like it's almost like time traveling. Like it can bring. It's very you interesting, though. Imagine you could, you could access your brain with even more like memories you have, mm -hmm. but also the very good ones as a child. Because I don't know a lot, lot about my like. I know my childhood was amazing. I have great memories, but there's mm -hmm. still there's thousands of millions millions of memories you you had or have somewhere stored back in your like brain library but you can't access it you know what i mean like your mm. like your your unconscious uh, memory you can though you can though yeah you and know imagine I, you access those you know when i started doing that a lot in therapy like okay. uh, when i started therapy last year and it, you know the whole thing where we talked about like childhood trauma yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. And um, for for me, for example, it unlocked so many memories that I completely uh, forgot because how the, mm -hmm. the human brain works, right? You can bend reality or memories in a certain way that makes you feel okay. So, for mm -hmm. example, you can 
decide or your brain can decide to mostly remember the positive things mm-hmm. and kind of you know make you feel like oh yeah you had this be- like just for my example you had this beautiful childhood everything was fine uh, you yeah. know you're doing fine now you're doing great and whatever um and then once you work with the therapist that knows what he's or she's doing and mm-hmm. um that person digs deeper and asks like the right question and you have yeah. these breakthroughs where you actually realize where they ask you like yeah but how did your parents do this and that how did that make you feel like how much time did you did you spend alone you know like did your parents do that um for example uh i was also invited on a podcast for Mm -hmm. a a german podcast actually with one of the uh old old guys that was the the head of uh twitch austria germany Mm -hmm. so dach and stuff and we had like a two and a half hour podcast together and it was almost like a therapy session and we talked a lot about like really? the, the children and uh, parents situation because he had like also really broken um relationship with his parents which he's mm-hmm. fixing now again and he asked me exactly questions that my therapist would and so yeah when i was 11 and my parents separated so that was just one of the things that i really remembered that just yeah, broke yeah. something inside of me again and made me like move uh, apart closer so that's like the Mm. most recent one for me um so i told him that when i was 11 my parents separated and my mom decided to keep the house that we're living in right and as Mm. a single parent affording to pay back the the mortgage of a house right while having a child is alone right and working full-time is really hard obviously right Mm. and um so he he's asked he asked me um why and i'm living in this house now right like i bought the Mm -hmm. house off my mom and um he asked me which i never thought about like why would you buy the house that you experienced so much trauma in like Mm -hmm. mental mental um trauma that you got from your your parents or your mother Um, and why would you decide to buy the house and live in a house that caused so much trauma in you, or that you experienced. Mm-hmm. Emotion. And then I thought about it. So basically, my mom told me when I was eleven that it she's keeping the house for me, that mm-hmm. she has to work that hard because I, as of an eleven you. year yeah. old, uh, yeah. wanted to keep the house. So my mom always like kind of guilt tripped me when I was yeah. younger, like, oh yeah, I had to keep the house. I couldn't spend that much money because I had to keep it to keep you happy if that makes yeah. sense so yeah. now full circle moment um for me kind of what i realized in the conversation was that in that moment that i bought the house off my mom and paid off the mortgage or whatever mm-hmm. i kind of paid off my my uh yeah, to debt your mom to my mom yeah. or the, i mean if you think about it it's kind of fucked up obviously like you can yeah. tell as a as an adult that an 11 year old decided that you have to keep the house like obviously as an adult yeah. you know that, that's bullshit <laughs> but now like i never thought about it i never realized it and now it makes sense like we completely <laughs> decored the house and completely renovate it so it's like a new house so yeah. metaphorically um I paid off my debt towards my mom that had to suffer and couldn't, you know, do, do a lot of things yeah. with um, paying or, or buying the house off of her. But then at the same time, stripping the house completely down and rebuilding it from the core up, right? So I kind of destroyed what was there and built something beautiful out of it. So it's yeah. like this this weird metaphor that i did without realizing mm. if that makes sense and when yeah. i when i when i spoke it out loud it was like holy shit that yeah. is what your brain more or less does like you could be like yeah maybe that was that's just coincidence or whatsoever but you know just that you remember that stupid line that your mom told you when you were 11 like yeah. that just shows that was something that like burned into your mind and was something yeah. uh that was important for you back then and yeah, obviously. yeah that was see and that that is also something um in in therapy um when you have childhood trauma the, you have an inner child right you heard the, the mm. saying of there's an inner child and if you have been uh, wounded traumatized or whatsoever that inner child stays at a certain age inside of you and um, so, for example, my inner child is around 11. 
that is mm-hmm. like when when my trauma happened when my parents separated and all of that kind of stuff and mm-hmm. um basically that child never grows up so whenever you get in like similar situations that um give you distress instead mm-hmm. of your your adult brain right instead of a uh, 31 year old julia that can handle like a conversation or like mm-hmm. an argument with somebody right uh, in a normal place um i can do that but as soon as there's something that triggers this trauma for me it's like you switch personalities in in a sense like obviously not 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 literal but your inner child takes over and you say or you take stupid decisions or or you you react in a way that a child would and you Mm -hmm. will continue doing that if you don't go back and address what happened back then work through those memories start um understanding look what happened to you when you were that young is not your fault and you can change it but you can start to address it and help your inner child to grow up and be like listen what happened to you back then was not your fault it is your parents fault they did this and this and this wrong and um you can understand that and once you start working through that and understanding all of that your inner child grows up till eventually it will reach the age that you're at now and that can you know take people their whole life some people Mm. will never address it and they're gonna be stuck in that kind of pattern and cycle of switching um to that kind of thing and um other people you know work through this in a year other people take five years and whatever it is Mm. and um that is really something for me that changed a lot and also to come back to the the topic of spirituality that was like one of the doors that opened a lot for me right where Mm. i i started understanding that everything kind of happens for a certain reason right yeah so yeah but that's crazy (laughs) so so sorry to always like bring up like such no that's so interesting like to when you hear that and that you explain how how this works because you got to understand everything you know what i mean so many people seek for this for these like answers of their questions and everything because they never either didn't work on it didn't realize couldn't realize because they needed help from someone else to be able to realize and all these things and you just evolving because you got to understand and you learned that thanks to everything that happened to you and the therapy you had and everything it's just so interesting to to see like get the like put the puzzle together you know what i mean exactly and and that's the thing like as you say like that's why therapists were Mm. in this case it was not a therapist right like it it was a long-eared friend that yeah went through therapy himself that yeah. learns to understand the patterns and learns to ask the right question and kind of like yeah. look right through you like he sees the pattern yeah. he obviously sees what it is but instead yeah. of like showing you like hey look that's what happened he just asked me that question but why do you think you kept that house after all of that yeah right yeah and then like your your brain starts like shifting and you're like oh shit, yeah. that makes sense right <laughs> And that is like those those kind of breakthroughs um, happen for like so often for me, like mm. since I'm thirty, like it's this weird thing since I'm thirty, like everything just makes sense, like all the puzzle pieces fit. <laughs> like I have, it's like almost in waves, like um, yeah. and and I don't know if it's if it's like th- therapy or spiritual awakening or whatever whatever you want to call it, right? So for me, with like. 30 it all started i think that's when i had my first um real breakthrough or awakening mm-hmm. or however you want to call it like i i feel like you know you know before like i was always uh, grumpy like I, I just i don't know i was just not in a happy place i was always grumpy and then at one point there was just something that clicked where i was like hold mm. up and like everything shifted like the whole the whole values the way you look at things and 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 i think the most important thing is just like all the the way you look at life and everything that happens in life it's almost like a change of perspective right instead of being like in first person 
you kind of switch to being in a third person mode if you mm. if you will and you don't only just see everything through your own eyes but you kind of take the the view of a spectator and you also see that it's not only about you but also about that every single person around you yeah. has something that they go through or whatever and once you you start realizing that you maybe don't take it too personal if somebody's being an asshole to you you know you're not going to yeah. like oh my god yeah fuck this dickhead he's being such a such an idiot and i think we talked about it before right you switch from that being just angry and like oh why is it always me why is everybody so mean to me me mm. me, me 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 and instead of that you go to like oh wow i met this person today and he must be going through something really bad right because yeah. he has been reacting that way and that shift d just changes everything to me no yeah. i don't know the only I... way where i can't turn this off is still video games yeah of course but that is again like we we talked about it like that is that is something else like that's like a different yeah a different, different world. Kind of world yeah like yeah. i mean obviously you shouldn't shouldn't necessarily like if you have a bad no day. i shouldn't jump onto <laughs> these arguments but sometimes i just want to because then this is probably this is probably where my inner child just gets triggered and offended <laughs> or I, because I'm, I'm just, I have a very, sometimes like it depends, but I have a very strong urge of self-justice. Mm -hmm. And I, and that's like the weird balance I always like struggle with. Cause on mm -hmm. one side, like I feel I'm like karma, like karma is existing for me. I mm -hmm. do not have to hurt this person myself because everything they do, they get back, no matter if it's good or bad. So yeah. it's not my job to teach this person a lesson but sometimes i i take some things personal and then it is my job to teach whoever it is a lesson and there's this weird like balance i try so desperately to 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 to, to keep because mm -hmm. i cannot like i do not want to change people it's not my job i don't have the energy and i cba to fucking teach anyone anything that, who doesn't even want to learn so um, same goes for me though, because I'm super <laughs> stubborn as well sometimes. And if I mm -hmm. don't want to learn anything or if I don't want to, uh, acknowledge or whatever, it just takes me longer. And I know that. So I understand both sides. And that's also why it's so hard for me because to balance these things, it also obviously depends on the situations. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's real life, uh, whatever it was or whatever it is, if, if you just let this be, I know for sure everyone gets what they deserve. So mm -hmm. I do not interfere most of the times. But if it's something, if you if you attack me like on a very personal level, you're going to feel you're my right. hate. Not my hate, <laughs> but my rage. Yeah. Because yeah, right. this is, sorry, that's my Scorpio coming in, guys. <laughs> Fuck so, <laughs> do not provoke Scorpios. I'm just telling you. I'm um, happy that I never got into a fight with. Dude, you know what would be really fucked up? Imagine in some weird parallel universe. Like I know that uh -huh. in this life, we would. I, I like I cannot imagine a scenario where you and me would get into a fight. Yeah, like, neither could like I. An, yeah, and an actual like you used to be my friend yeah, and now yeah, i hate you yeah, yeah, like i yeah. cannot imagine any scenario that could happen but imagine in some weird parallel universe or like a former life or a, a yeah. future life or whatever like our two personalities for whatever reason would not get along imagine how horrible <laughs> that would end like <laughs> you know what i think julia if we met when we were like in our teens oh shit i would think have hated we other. would have hated each 100%. other but at some point like we would have almost like just smashed each, each other's face but and then at some point we realized hey actually we're we're kind of uh, we're thinking the same like why aren't yeah. we friends you know what i mean i think that would have been it because it was always like, uh, Klagfurt. We don't mm -hmm, go to Klagfurt. Mm -hmm. Like, those people are so fucking weird. <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so I think that would have been the time frame where we would have clashed together oh, maybe yeah. and hated each other. And then we, we would have realized, hey, actually, 
they're bo- like she's cool you know what I yeah mean? you know you know how, yeah. how i could imagine it imagine we would have gone to like the same club or something or our bar mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. like every weekend right we throwing ashtrays the- <laughs> 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 um we would we would have like seen each other every weekend would have obviously known but just from seeing i would be like oh who is this arrogant bitch oh i mm-hmm. hate her why is she here all the time yeah why is she flirting with the guy that i like or whatever and we would have hated each other and then at one point randomly we would be both super fucking drunk you would go into the bathroom i would just come out of the toilet and we would be so fucking drunk that we'd be like ah, yeah hi what are yeah. you doing here oh my god i see you all the time you're <laughs> such a bitch and then we would become friends like the, yeah. the, the yeah. go out with the toilet toilet uh, friends kind of meetups kind of you have yeah yeah exactly yeah um, so that i could uh imagine but i'm i'm also like if i if i think back right the the time you came into my life for example mm-hmm. um that was a time still where i would have considered myself a really bad person and like a really mm-hmm. unaware selfish angry at the world i'm i'm being so unlucky everything is shit um Mm -hmm. nothing is my fault you know that kind of thing um and and now knowing you right i'm super Mm -hmm. surprised actually that you as a person that more or less you know grew up in such a positive way that you have Mm -hmm. um where i don't want to say attracted but like that you were drawn towards me so Mm -hmm. i'm like almost wondering if Again, that is. I'm so sorry for all the people that are not at all spiritual or whatever. But I, I was just wondering if it was kind of like meant to be that you felt drawn to mm. kind of be in my friendship circle because you kind of knew that that was like somewhere on the inside of me. If that makes sense, I always have tears of eyes. It's so stupid, but even if if so i didn't know at that point yeah yeah of course but like Like, on the inside you kind of you know yeah because i was i I grew up in a very spiritual way but i never really like i didn't talk much about it obviously like when how old was i when when we got to meet that was 2015 that was seven years ago so i was start of 20s Mm -hmm. um and the time I started talking about this more, more and more, because mm-hmm. of the people like actually acknowledging these things or talking about very, very deep stuff. I, I had friends or have friends I can talk about deep stuff, but not about this like super spiritual life or like what comes around goes around karma mm-hmm. and stuff, right? On the surface, you can talk with, yeah, with of course. people, but there's barely... There's very, very, very lit. Like my, the circle is very small. I can, like, a friends where I can talk about these things, where I know these people will also understand. And I think, um, what did I even want to say? The first thing I wanted to say is the first young, person you came into. I ta- yeah. yeah, the first person I talked more about these things, like on a very deep level mm-hmm. of acknowledging. All these things is you. Really? Yeah. What the fuck? I have, I have, I have friends. I can, how to say, I know friends or have friends where, or people in general, where, you know, they are thinking the same, like my sister mm. or my dad, for example, mm. like my, my family ex- excluded right now. Yeah. Um, but beside that, and also on the internet, I do not really talk about these things because these things are so natural to me like breathing Mm. right and i do not tweet that i'm breathing and that's the same (laughs) with these things and then when all these things came up like more instagram accounts with people being spiritual or people doing like uh cleansing their apartments and shit what i've been doing since i can think because we did it at home all the time it's like okay is this a trend now is this like is are people out there on the internet even that are the same like hey she's doing that as well he's doing that as Mm -hmm. well that's amazing but I never showed that side of me and so I didn't really talk about these like cleansing things or anything because most of the people do not see that as a (coughs) as a real thing right Mm -hmm. so most of them don't do it and you are one of those little, these little people. I can just tell all these things without 
having yeah, like, like getting looked or weird on or anything you mm. know what i mean so yeah and with the internet it's very hard for me because i as i as i said earlier today same like um i i try to explain myself like even in a podcast like oh yeah i'm sorry yeah. if you don't feel or understand like i, I should probably stop doing that right because if people want to yeah. listen to it they will if they don't yeah. they won't yeah but as you say like the same like i don't think i can talk with anybody like this maybe a little mm. bit i started with my stepmom mm -hmm. she kind of i feel like she's on the same it's a lot about feeling right you know how mm. like you and me like i can sense or feel or whatever like i know that when i talk with that w about something like that with you i know that you understand what i mean mm. that you feel yeah. the same that i feel like on an emotional intelligence yeah. an emotional intelligence level yeah. and a spiritual level or whatever um however you want to call it i know that you can understand and and relate and empathize yeah with everything that that i say even if you might have not experienced it in a certain way i still yeah. know that that this it's so much about feeling and understanding like i'm not the smartest guys but emotionally you cannot act yeah or or, or like fake anything in front of me because i can look through your soul yeah yeah, yeah i don't know much about confirm. i know much about the world i don't know much about like all these uh how to say it, like the intellectual intelligence in i don't even talk anymore <laughs> I have a very, my <coughs> emotional intelligence is very high, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's all I need for myself. <laughs> same though. Is it is the same for me? Like, for, for example, I often have issues with, um, especially in German. Again, I was talking about it in a podcast mm. with Simon as well. Um, I have real big issues because on, on an intellectual level, I'm not yeah. that good. Like I'm, I'm not good with neither am I with, with words or or explaining or even yeah. putting into words how I mean so. things. Like sometimes I wish Ugh. I could sound smarter. So, yeah, so people, it, it doesn't make sense, right? Like <laughs> I, I wish I could, I could voice the things that I feel, yeah, and I understand in a way that it would sound more intelligent yeah so that people would take me more serious mm -hmm. um but on the same hand i couldn't care less because i feel like if if people are on the same level vibe uh, uh level of being aware of what's out there they will mm -hmm. understand and they will not judge and they will yeah. They will empathize and feel and, and, and everything the same way. So in the end, it doesn't really matter. But I think if you want to make people aware of it that maybe are not that far yet, it could be helpful to be a little bit more eloquent with mm. the, <laughs> the way you would express it. Um, yeah. Yeah, to, uh, now we have been talking a lot about like spirituality, right? Like how, how it mm. makes us feel, how we open up and stuff. Um, should we maybe talk about... And um, first of all, what what is spirituality? Um, so Steffi and me, we found uh, the the actual meaning. So like the if you Google what is, uh, uh. sorry, <coughs> that needed to come out. Spirituality. <laughs> what is spirituality? Spir spirituality. Uh, what is it? Um, so Steffi, do you wanna do you wanna read it out? So my dis spirituality. Dis dyslexic ass doesn't ruin it again. Shubra, shubra. <laughs> It's the quality of being concerned with the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things. The shift in priorities allows us to embrace our spirituality in a more profound way. Exactly. So that That's is it. like the, the, the written, explained, theoretical yep. uh, thing of what, what, what is spirituality. So Steffi, as, as we already said, like you, you grew up, right? in a spiritual mm -hmm. family where all of that kind of stuff was normal um thinking outside of the box being in tune with nature um talking about feelings letting your le letting yourself feel the feelings that you want to cleansing apartments whatever it is doesn't matter if you yeah. if you want to call it uh you know people that are maybe not into it like all of those um you know like hippie like kind of things Esa or esoteric es esoteric yeah like everybody has a es esoteric aunt or something like that so you kind of grew up in that way and um i grew up 
with parents that were the exact opposite they were completely mm. rational they, they, they didn't, give, didn't give a fuck they were making fun of people that bought shit in a mandala shop in Klagenfurt I don't know if you know that one we have, like <laughs> no. a, little, we have a little uh so they shop. probably they probably laughed about me as well because I was probably there <laughs> probably but, but it was funny like um so we have this esoteric shop in, in Austria, mm-hmm. uh, in Klangfurt, where you can buy, buy like sage and like all handcrafted stuff, like stones, crystals, everything. I don't even know if it mm-hmm. still exists, but it was called Mandala Shop. So mm-hmm. Mandala. Um, mm-hmm. And my mom and my dad were always making fun of it. Like my mom now maybe wouldn't make fun of it anymore and would appreciate it because stuff is like handcrafted and shit. But my mm-hmm. dad would still be like, oh, yeah, let's just a hippie shop, you know, where all those weird people go into. That kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's how I was raised, right? So I was always like, yeah. oh, my God, there's just weird people that probably smoke some dank kush. So I came <laughs> out of this. And now I feel like I'm like the biggest hippie of the ball with having like kush <laughs> yeah. everywhere, charging them uh, with the moon and uh, manifesting stuff and all of that kind of stuff. And I already um, explained how for me my my first if you want to call it like spiritual awakening or whatever Mm -hmm. um so i just want to read out what a spiritual awakening is for the people that are Mm -hmm. like what the fuck are you talking about so um just when you google what a spiritual awakening i'm just gonna read it out a spiritual awakening is an ancient concept that has existed for centuries and observe uh, and was observed in countless cultures and religions throughout the world. Spiritual awakening occurs when a person awakens to their life with a new perspective and sense of being within it. Um, so that's what I said before for me, if you want to compare it to a video game, it was like I was yeah. living in this first person uh, view the whole time and now I'm playing everything out of a third person view, right? Doesn't yeah. mean that I'm not the same person anymore. I'm just um, experiencing... More aware of exactly the world out of of, out of a different um angle perspective angle perspective exactly so 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 what is what is it for you how how did you how do you see like spirituality for you like how would you explain your connection or your i don't know how to explain it that's a it's such a tough one for me because i the thing is i've I can't remember a day or a time in my life where I haven't been that way. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have this big spiritual awakening where I realized that this is happening. I just Mm -hmm. had that with some situations in my life, no matter if it was like someone I was super in love with. And one day I just woke up, I opened my eyes and I was like, I'm done. And Mm then all the feelings just, I, I let go of all the feelings and I was just I was healed from it mm. and I have these things mm-hmm. um which I think has a lot to do with self-love because I can torture myself for quite a while but at some point my body and my mind says it's enough and you mm. don't want this anymore and once this moment is there I completely let go of all these like emotions or feelings Mm -hmm. and I'm done with it and I'm completely neutral to it I do not judge anymore I do not care anymore and I do not have any feeling for it so some would find it very like weird Mm -hmm. because I do not have any feelings anymore for someone I had like strong feelings or something doesn't matter what it is or which situation you were or are in um but i always compare it to these um to the shamans or to the monks you know the ones like from i think they're from T- like the tibetan uh, mon- uh monks that draw these beautiful mandalas and sand mm-hmm. yeah and then and it, it takes them away. so yeah. long and <laughs> once they're done they just like swoosh over it and it's gone again and mm. this is this is this is how I compare these like experiences or the moments in my life I had because once I'm done with it mm-hmm. and it could have been like super beautiful, everything. If I'm done with it and if I don't want it anymore, I just wipe it away. Cause... Do, you, do you know like the principle of like the whole 
awakening and like the stages and stuff how how it works like there's no like end stage or something but the way like spiritual awakenings are mm -hmm. portrayed like i i read a lot about it because mm -hmm. like i feel like i'm like getting them so 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 much more often mm -hmm. like again i felt 30 years i was running around with like short club like yeah yeah, know, yeah like, a, like a the horse is looking yeah, exactly. straight yeah and now like my my horizon is like opening further and further so for example in therapy stuff is getting explained or like it's like such a mix-up for me as well like mm -hmm. i started with therapy as like a really like you know everybody like not really like therapy doesn't necessarily have to be something spiritual right like mm -hmm. it, it, it's something like really like rational there's like science behind it you know yeah. psychology all of that kind of stuff but it can be also really spiritual for people so for me therapy unlocked a spiritual part for me that was mm -hmm. blocked before and um so for example if you're you have trauma or you have problems or you have issues mentally um how it works you it's like waves or s circles right so mm -hmm. you you have a certain pattern that you mm -hmm. that you repeat all the time so um doesn't yeah. matter if it's something toxic or not and um so in life it comes with waves so um in in the beginning i don't know you have a challenge you you repeat your pattern and then there's always this one point that you have the choice to either mm -hmm. start over with the yeah. circle and and like repeat the same issue habit that you have or yeah. you to decide to break out and go to the next level like learn yeah. and so on so that is like the thing of of, of habit uh breaking um breaking through things that are bad for you or whatever and then learning from it reconstructing yourself you know like it's always like mm. a really hard thing like most of the time yeah. when you have to make a decision like that if you break through a habit it is uh, one that will hurt you first that will break you down and then you have to reconstruct and like figure out again like who am i even if i let go of this behavior yeah. or whatever um so and with spiritual awakening it's kind of the same so so basically in most of the time when you're about to go to a next stage like they always say it's like five stages or something like that mm -hmm. um it's always it starts with um the darkness so mm -hmm. you always like are in a really bad spot you're like questioning yourself what is life why am i doing this why is everything so shit so most of the time start with something uh, really bad and then it comes to like the questioning where you ask yourself yeah why is it this way you maybe mm -hmm. um isolate yourself it's a really really uh painful way where you like deconstruct yourself where you just mm -hmm. question everything um you search for like the the pursuit within and you try to uh resolve and and find maybe a new path and then from mm -hmm. that on you you go deeper and then you go into like a phase of rebirthing and like reconstructing yourself recreating mm -hmm. yourself and um starting fresh as you kind of said like with the mandala so it's always like you come to this point where you're like so so deep and feel like you're in in, in such a bad place and exactly then that's when you do soul searching or however you want to call yeah. it you deconstruct your research you 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 learn you ask yourself the right questions you go deeper yeah. and then you rebirth yourself that and and that's the thing how how it's uh, supposed in life so maybe that is also something like uh with you Steffi, you know where you say like oh yeah i'm not really sure you know what i want to do with life you know i don't wa really want to mm -hmm. know I, I don't really know um you know in which direction i want to focus in you know mm -hmm. and that can be for example something like that where it, at one point you're like okay so i'm gonna decide to do this you break through that circle and you're gonna be like okay so i'm completely gonna reinvent myself and yeah. uh, do that kind of thing um and for me those kind of things happen so often like it is even if it's small things you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it can yeah. it can be something for example um i don't know eating habits right like mm -hmm. I, I feel like I said it before again everywhere um but I dedicated like three years of fixing my mental health um and I feel like I'm a really good point and now yeah that I again you're never finished with fixing your your mental mm -hmm. health. there's always there was more that you can do um but I'm at a point where I'm really happy with my life and like consistently being in a, in a happy place 
and now I'm like, okay, what is what is there that I couldn't work on because of my mental that was so bad? And that was, mm-hmm. for example, my physical health. So it was like, um, you know, working out, eating the right food, um, yeah. to to not only, you know, punish myself. Like it's also a way of punishing mm-hmm. if you if you don't treat your body in a good way. That is also a way of self manipulation. You know, um, yeah, that that you think you don't deserve to 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 be at a certain point in your life so you yeah. manipulate yourself not knowingly so in like in a passive way so you don't deserve to be happy so uh you need to be overweight or whatever and that's why your body brings you to like eat too much and not work out or whatever it is and now i'm dedicating a lot of time to healing my body um and it feels so fucking good yeah. and yeah, that 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 is the the thing for me, like all of the stages, those waves, those circles that you need to break through, and it it's fine, you know. If, like if you go through that circle and you know you're at this crossroad again, and you decide for the third, fourth, hundredth time to yeah. go in that circle again because you're not ready yet, right? That's why yeah. life gives you the chances over and over again. Like it is it is yeah. fine if you're not ready yet, but you should also be aware. That if you're not yet ready yet, there's gonna be this crossroad again in the future where you will be able to make the decision of yeah. uh, breaking out, you know. And that can be everything. That can yeah. that that looks different for every single person. Write it down, guys. Note it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm always like talking so much. But yeah, meditation. It's... Meditation helped me so much through that thinking and journaling writing it down finishing like that's, thought processes that's the thing where i'm struggling right now I, I i stopped writing down my things i do not have a vision board i do not see i do not envision my things i haven't been doing this in so long i think since i stopped uh, since i finished my studies because mm-hmm. then this is this was the first time where you were like you're done you know what i mean with the first thing mm-hmm. you like the the whole work world is open to you like choose you know what i mean mm-hmm. and that's where where i kind of stopped or just started floating and doing everything i do right now but i do not like envision it <coughs> like the one these things i really want to achieve and everything i have it in my head every now and then but it's like floating around and not really like shining mm-hmm. and that's what i want to do now or start now um with journaling as well because I need to get things out of my head even if it's talking but most importantly to me I think it's writing down it it always has been like in school as well I I learned the best or I could study the best when I wrote it down so Mm -hmm. I think this is a method I should keep but I didn't for some reason um which is stupid so I want to I really want to do this again um I mean, meditation the wise that's the, that's the thing like you know as i said before like it's fine in life if you hold you know if you like mm. are static for a time if you're like in a good place like it doesn't mean that you need to evolve like all the time and like it's fine to rest it's fine to be in a in a spot where you're happy with and uh, the thing is like as you said like you you know what you need to do or you yeah. know you know your ways i just do don't do it <laughs> <laughs> so and the same with um with meditation, like what I do mm-hmm. almost every night. It's like a oh, little I love this. A little a little ritual. Listen, um, guys, it's so good. And the first thing, like when I saw it's actually it's not connected to the Eternals from Marvel, but when I saw this movie and this little like energy stone they have, I was like, hey, that's the one like I and like I visualize always in my head when I do my things. That was quite funny because now I can do it even better because I have a actual visual, visual animated thing. <laughs> that was mm-hmm. so funny. But yeah, anyways, it was it's like almost every night when I'm not too exhausted, I just it's kind of, I'm not sure if it's me- it's not really meditation because <laughs> in meditation you're more like you do not think too much, you just let your whole body like and energy flow right and what i do is kind of a hybrid or i don't know manifest manifestation Mm -hmm. healing meditation process um so i just close my eyes i lay in bed on my back 
have one arm, like one hand on my chest. And I just start entering. I have a little like staircase in my head where I go up. And then I unlock this big glass library where I have all the plans of how a human is built. Mm -hmm. And you have every single plan of how a cell works, how your brain works, how your heart works, how your lungs work, everything else. And then I have this little altar in, my mid in the middle of my library. Um, and there's this energy ball, ball, like light energy ball. And I press that down. And then it just charges up with all the information in my head. And then I start healing my whole body. I start healing my head, like my nerves on my, on my head are very damaged from psoriasis and from obviously bleaching so I barely feel anything and I wanna I just envision and visualize how I just heal my body because mm -hmm. I can create life so I can recreate my own cells in my body kind of you know what I mean I mean to be fair like every body you're like renewing yourself constantly exactly right yeah and that's what I do yeah, yeah. or try and um, no, you are doing it. You're not trying. You're doing it. I'm doing it. Yeah. I yeah. So and that's I start with my head and then go down. Envision just that my whole body gets, um, or the my light energy flows through my whole body. <coughs> my whole body is just like shining, glowing, and regenerating from the day. <coughs> regenerating all the cells. Get rid of all the stuff that shouldn't be in my body and recover all the all the cells and all all the stuff that's in my body to start fresh next day mm -hmm. with everything and I go from head until I reach my toes and then I'm like okay now I'm connected to the universe and then I try to manifest or just think of things I want to do uh or want to achieve it takes I don't know 15 minutes or so damn you're fast that's and then really fast. yeah and then because I it's, most, it's, mostly it's, fall asleep <laughs> that's super nice because that's Usually, like, the way I meditate or the way I learn mm -hmm. meditating is pretty similar. Like, I don't mm -hmm. have, like, a, a library or something. But what I usually do when I do meditation. So, I, when I started getting into meditating, I did a lot of, like, guided meditations. Mm -hmm. And I did um, some, they're called, like, uh, I forgot it, like, sun, like, morning rice sun, mm -hmm. or something like that. So... For example, I have issues meditating in, in winter because I like mm -hmm. meditating outside. So what I usually mm -hmm. do, especially now when it's getting warm, I go outside in my garden, I sit down and then mm -hmm. I imagine like I sit outside, I close my eyes and I feel like the, the sun on my body, right? Like the sun mm -hmm. rays, you feel how you're getting warm. And then like envision how like the sun is kind of like, how do you, I don't know how to say it, like merges into your body so it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if it's like your head or your chest or whatever mm -hmm. and then you just feel how um the sun rays are mm -hmm. like kind of like filling up every single Going inch through of your, your body, body. Yeah. exactly yeah. and so so you start from the toes so you start how um like <laughs> sorry we have a little a little puppy a little <laughs> puppy uh visit right here <laughs> um so you, you you imagine like every single inch or every centimeter of your body filling up. So you start with yeah. your toes, uh, goes up to your to your like ankles, to your knees, to your legs up, and and you really try to scan every single bit of your yeah. body. And yeah. the thing is, when you start meditating, it's really hard to hold the attention. At least for me, it was. Yeah, um, I have that not, still. Yeah, yeah. So and that's the thing that you train, right? Like so mm. so. If I would be able to do it in one go that I don't lose focus and think out of sudden, oh, yeah, fuck, I need to do groceries or something in between. Every time <laughs> there's something like that, oh, I fuck, have, I forgot to write yeah. something down. I have I that every over. now and then. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I have to start over then as well. It's, it was last week, I think. I could not focus on this. And then I was like, okay, it's just not working today. Like, there's too much in my brain right now that needs to get sorted <laughs> or my body has to, like, um, uh, process. So let's let's just not do it today mm. but yeah yeah exactly it's very like said. the focusing is that's that's the hard part but as you say yeah. like and then you you start over again and then at one point you're gonna follow through it and i remember when i started like it sometimes would take me an hour 
because mm-hmm. you try to like envision it in your head as well, yeah, right? Yeah. Um. And so now, usually when I do it, I'm like, I don't know, between if it's like summer already, and I do it like all the time. Like I most of the time take a break in winter again because for mm-hmm. me, it is um so much connected with the sun and the sun rays that is and the way it's and the, unconnected and to like, the moon, Julia. It's yeah. like because I again, the same. to me, it's like the the most efficient or the most powerful. I feel like when it's dark and silent, with these things at yeah, least. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a few like Jedi meditation background sound and mm-hmm. stuff where I can even go deeper, which is very like that's a very crazy feeling because you feel your whole body like vibrating. Uh, yeah, vibrating or the medical is running through. <laughs> um, <laughs> the just your cells working you know what i mean mm-hmm. what i mean what what i mean what so i, mean? I f- it's very easy for me during night because mm-hmm. then i turn on the light in myself oh, like in my head so the light ball in my ha- head the energy ball is just like shining and blinding everything and then charging exploding and then you just glow in the dark this is how That's i so envision cool. it envision for myself it, yeah. And you have it with the sun. Yeah, I feel like like I'm yeah. If I, if I get up in the morning, like I feel like I'm I'm like almost like an empty shell, and then for yeah. me it feels like I absorb the sun and fill myself up with the sunlight, yeah. however you want to call it, right? It sounds so weird so to talk cool. about that, but again, like we're just weird polar opposite, like the sun and the moon. Like yeah. I think we said it before in one episode already. But it's funny how now we never talked about like. I, you told me once that at night you tried to regenerate yourself with that kind of stuff. I upgraded it, by the way, because all this library thing, I just started <laughs> in like visualizing in my head a month ago because I was I was set there one night and I was like, my body can create life. Why? My body has to be able to recreate as well. And then I was like, what if? We can recreate, can recreate my heart. I can recharge my lungs, and everything, just by repairing them <laughs> overnight. Mm-hmm. And then I just, I just built this library in my head with all the plans of every single cell how, of how a human body works or such how a, cool, a human it's being such works. Such a cool way of imagining it. Yeah, and then I was like, <laughs> bro. <clears throat> I can make a baby. I can I can recharge my whole batteries, like all my batteries as well. Then why shouldn't I? Of course. And, of course. and so I started doing this. This is only like a month old, I think, with my whole library. Before I just had this little altar, a very like spiritual altar with sage and everything on, and the light bulb or the energy light bulb, which I pressed down, and now it's the whole library of recreating so cool. my body. So yeah. <clears throat> That's really cool. That's what I do, guys. Just start (laughs) imagining some some kind of like temple or or library. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very cool. It's very cool. When I think about like a a kind of version like this for me, yeah, I chose I chose a glass glass ball, a big ball where you which you open with your own DNA, Mm -hmm. so you can only access it by yourself nobody else can and then you can just do do the matching that's yeah. how, how i envision all this <laughs> oh people will think so people if people are not like if people listen that are not listen, into this they're, they're probably like gone. Listen, listen they're <laughs> already gone those people those people that are sitting here like those people I, uh, and i just want to say like Steffi and me we're not even doing any drugs so it's not like we, nah, we, that's we were just tripping us. too hard on, on, on acid or something like that yeah. um so don't worry about that it, it's literally just i don't know maybe maybe one point in your life you're gonna reach that as well but it's yeah. see i don't even care like i understand now no. like all of those hippie aunts uh esoteric susans or however you want to call them yeah. when i was a kid i was just thinking like oh my god they're so weird but now i also understand I love like them. those kind of people they also now that i think about it they never gave a fuck they no. never gave a fuck what you were saying or calling them a hippie or i don't know whatever because they were so content and happy with themselves and they were just yeah. probably at the same level as i'm now and they were like oh yeah you just one day one day hopefully yeah gonna understand and then once you yeah. understand you're like oh fuck 
and like the whole thing with feeling connected to like the whole world and like for me also at one point i mean it's something so obvious but the thing that like the, the whole circle of life we i think again we talked about that already mm. like doesn't matter if it's like the the water on your planet you know with like um the water the water in our oceans yes. and lakes and and then it evaporates and then it rains and it comes back down and it nourishes the plants and so on and so on like somebody dies and then your body uh, decomposes uh, goes back into yeah. earth and nour- nourishes the, the world like and everything is like this this circle this circle of life fucking like mm-hmm. whatever you like that whole whole kind of thing and i don't know touching grass going out and touching grass. yeah yeah Be- being grounded walking with your barefoot on on grass or earth and like seeing the the beauty in in everything is just something really really cool oh, yeah hi puppy feeling things touching doing? things what are you doing oh my god um but yeah i i mean again like i'm really interested on in how many people actually gonna listen or watch to this episode because i know yeah. it's a really 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 specific topic and i'm also interested in in the um in in the feedback you know if there's gonna be any comments besides the, the you i was about to say crazy. let <laughs> us know guys if you if you like us talking about our true selves <laughs> um like how how we think about the world and everything and yeah, all this spiritual shit. It's just this is basically part of my life. I just don't share it with you because I'm a ra- I'm a just I'm a gamer on the internet. I mean, it's is... so cool that we have so many different sides, you know. On the one side, we're freaking I don't know gamer girls on the internet that stream mm. on Twitch, and people might think, oh, those are so shallow. They just play fucking Apex, World of Warcraft, Valorant all day, <laughs> um, mm. and then. Like, if you would meet us somewhere in the local esoteric shop, you would be like, oh, shit. <laughs> what, what the hell? <laughs> what the yeah. hell is this? Who no, is but, she? <laughs> who is she? No, but I think it's really cool. Um, So, again, I'm really interested in, in the comments of you guys. Even if you think we're like those weird hippie aunts, that's totally fine for us. Let us know in the comments. Are we weird hippie aunts? Are you like, do you feel like you're spiritually awakened yet? Did you have those weird moments where you knew you were at the crossroad and you felt yourself like breaking out of a habit, changing something in your life? Also, the whole thing with um, when when you the science of being spiritual, when you like uh, choose to avoid negative people and negative behaviors and kind of automatically more tend to surround yourself with the positive people and the good people like um finding a meaning or purpose in life um asking questions about life and death uh, we have this beautiful graphic that steffi um asked earlier. yeah it's like um the science of spirituality <clears throat> so what it, what it says it? in there if you want to yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. uh it looks like this guys it's just i found that on the internet Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you, Internet, for showing us. Thank you, Internet. Um, <laughs> Mind Journal, by the way, Mind Help <laughs> uh, graphics. Experiencing uh, connectedness with your higher self is a process. Seeking your higher power can increase your spiritual vibration and induce positive emotions. Some of the signs are as follows. Okay, guys, this is the ultimate check. Make make checks on your how many in your notebooks how many now. out of what how many is it one yeah. two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen there's how many of the thirteens there's one twice so twelve yeah twelve okay twelve <clears throat> let's see okay how many First out of, of twelve all, do you have Julia ready to take yeah, feeling yeah, yeah. peaceful with meditation or other mindful practices check yeah for you too check so yeah. yeah avoiding negative people and behaviors check partly <laughs> partly <laughs> sometimes i need it <laughs> but Listen, again that's the balance i need guys I have, the a, thing. I have a lot of darkness within myself as well that's why my lightsaber is purple but i can balance it the dark and the light side always there there must be a balance i mean it doesn't mean that you have to avoid it a hundred percent but just make smarter I choices couldn't. than yeah in the past maybe like the dark side is part of me as well right <clears throat> mm-hmm it's like Moira, guys. If you're a Moira OTP, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 
by the way, it's better to heal your teammates instead of dealing damage with your purple all because it doesn't deal <laughs> I didn't I never much heard that. Anymore. Mm -mm. So, so interesting. All right. <laughs> Next one. Feeling compassionate and positive. Yes. My glass I is feel always positive. Half full. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. My glass is always half full. Yeah. It's like see, these are the things. It's so so programmed in my head. I I don't even I don't even know that it can be half empty. You know what I mean? That's imagine, not in my head. Imagine running through your life saying your glass is always half empty and it and it's always the fault of others. It's because you're unlucky. That's literally me. What's such a fucking idiot? But you're not like that anymore. Yeah, luckily. You can be but fucking was, proud. That was literally me. I was like, oh my god, life is so shit. I don't deserve I was, this. I just had that in my teens, like everyone, right? Hormones overdose. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. But deep down, I always knew, like, fuck it, bro. I love myself. <laughs> but yeah. You just don't know it at that, in that moment because yeah, teens yeah. are different. Um, next one. Asking questions about life and death. Mm, I mean, maybe not that much. More like... Um, how do you say it like the, the whole thing with circle of life and understanding mm -hmm. and valuing that kind of stuff about death for me it's more like um i'm con like i would be fine with dying like mm, I, I i'm not like afraid or anything of dying or i would be sad because i didn't or, or like even if other people die like don't get me wrong like i'm obviously sad if somebody dies that i love but in the past, I would always be like, oh, it's so unfair. Why am I losing this person and whatever? And it's never mm. easy to lose a person or an animal or whatever mm. it is. But um, now, speaking of my own death, like, I, I'm happy to be able to give life back, if that makes sense. Yeah. And give if something back. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I, can be, I can be like, yeah, I give a lot to the world if that makes sense yeah and with my dad i will physically nourish something hopefully yeah yeah finding meaning and purpose in life yeah for you that's a tough one sometimes not yeah actually it is because I, that's the thing, like, because I do not share all these things on the internet. And sometimes I feel like, should I just to help other people that are the same? Sure. And then I'm, and then I'm again <sighs> thinking how much is, even though it wouldn't for me, but how much is marketing? How much is just like the facade of some people? But you should again, care about I that. Wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't draw these people towards me anyways then because mm. I draw these people that are the same. So, yeah. Exactly. That's, that's the thing. Like, it doesn't matter if like a thousand people see it and like 999 think, oh, what the fucking weirdo. Yeah. And there's just one, peop one person that can take something from it. Yeah. That's already worth it, you know? Yeah, true. Being hopeful when things are challenging. Yes. Are you? No, it is, yes. I, I, I am a, a lot. Like, I'm a lot of those, like, you know, those fucking cringy, cheesy shit, like, if stuff is going bad or your life is hard, remember you're being like an arrow pulled back just to be launched further <laughs> in the front. <laughs> like, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Like, I always know that, like, don't get me wrong, like, I'm obviously, like, not happy in the moment. But I know that if something is getting shit, it's kind of like the whole cycle thing with like an awakening. I'm like, oh shit, stuff is going bad. That means that the next fucking wave, whatever is it's coming, coming. it's going to show me something or make me understand something in life. I like How challenges. It, for you? it depends like if it's a very like shitty situation. But again, it's just like shitty in that moment. And then I... I, I just know I'll get out of it. But mm -hmm. challenging things in general, I'm a person, I get bored pretty fast of things. So if there's a routine, I get bored of it. I always have to spice it up. No. Um, and I need a lot of diversity with everything. Mm. Weirdly enough or funnily enough, with games, I'm fine. But like playing the same game, for example, I've been playing Apex for over a year now, almost only. Um, but the, the thing is with Apex, every single fight, every single round is different right there's never the same Pardon. it's never the same game so that's what's 
what keeps it interesting for me and what's it's it's very fast paced so and i like these things and i like challenging things i get bored of if i do the same shit every mm. or, or for like over weeks that's why i also find like thousands of hobbies every year <laughs> i want to do this and i want to do this and i want to do this instead of like finishing one thing um unless i'm super passionate about it. but i always need i always need a challenge in my life no matter if it's work wise if it's uh, hobby wise private whatever it is i like I, i like challenges and i like being challenged and i can i can just work a lot uh i can work very good under pressure challenge yeah. under being challenged um yeah. believing that life is sacred and should be embraced hell yeah oh yeah 100% Your body is also sacred, guys. Your Treat body like is a, a temple. temple. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Having a greater level of empathy and intuition. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. We well, talked about it earlier. Yeah. Even if I see someone on the street, just... Or if, I think I told that already. Like, air, a- airport situations when people meet, oh, right? yeah. You yeah. know they haven't seen each other in so long. Or even if it's just a dog going crazy, I could cry there. Because I can feel the excitement of those people. And I'm like, oh my God. And if I let that through, like if I if I let that go through me, it's just, it's so touching to me. And I need to, like, that's on my list. I need to learn to control these things. Like when to shut down and when to like open up, you know? Mm. When I let those emotions in and when i do not want to empathize with someone because yeah, it's like sure. it can be a for lot sure. yeah of course sometimes um but yeah guys maybe i'm a healer feeling at peace while being alone yes i love being alone nowadays yes like it's been the past few years i really 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 i love being um with people and i love having company a lot even if it's just an animal mm. i love I mean, having yeah, someone course. on my I mean, side i mean are, are we talking about it. we're talking about like social social both right? i guess i guess like technically mm. being alone is being alone also without being an alone. animal like okay i technically also prefer having an animal around me but mm-hmm. like i feel like animals are more like obviously you don't necessarily have a conversation with an animal at least not like in, in I a, in a vo- no yeah yeah you know what i mean like you have more like an emotional connection with that animal True. right so you're yeah. like feeling each other's yeah. emotions more than you like talk about it or whatever so yeah. it's more like an exchange of energy <laughs> So yeah, yeah, true. But you know, I mean, like it's more like yeah. you nurture each other with energy more yeah. than anything else. So I think it's a little bit different because I feel like animals are like a different level of being. Yeah, again, really weird. But same again. Before I was thirty, being alone, I would be depressed. I would be emo. I would be. <laughs> Why is nobody with me? Now I'm like, ah, oh, guys, I can get my shit done. Oh yeah, let's go. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Just having having time for yourself, like yeah. completely for yourself. Yeah, exactly. Um, next one is feeling connected with your soul. That's something I need to work on. I'm trying, but I mm-hmm. I I feel like I haven't fully figured out yet mm-hmm. who I am. Like I've learned way more Neither about myself, I. but I mean that's the same with purpose again, kinda. Where like yeah, yeah. I know what I want to be doing in life, but do I really know? As you said, you said for example, oh, I could be a healer, right? You could be a healer. Mm. So that was like your natural kind of thing. And for me, yeah. it's like if I think about it, like I I want to be a nurturer, if that makes sense. Like I mm-hmm. want to give something to people. Uh, kind of like i mean you already do julia yeah, you do that but... so much if i think of the basic or like if you think of the very um basic thing not basic things but of the normal like IRL things mm-hmm. you are doing exactly that whenever someone's at your place you're always looking after yeah. uh, after them f- making them feel the best way possible having the best time when they're at your place <laughs> like feeling feeling super super welcome and super um invited and everything so 
just, hope so. I would just like to find a way for you know, a different to, level. Yeah, yeah. To make it even, I don't know, like better. Like to be mm -hmm. better at what I'm doing. Like, yeah, I invite people for food and, and like I, I try to listen and help people, but there's something by like, itself. Yeah, I like, feel like I haven't within like, yourself. You know how you like unlock layers to get closer mm -hmm. to to yourself. You like you learn more things about you, and mm -hmm. I feel like I still have a few layers to peel off. Same. To find like the the actual core, and that's probably gonna take to like I'm sixty, and when I'm sixty, I'm gonna be like, dude, I thought with thirty, like this, I don't know, crazy witch that I don't know. Yeah. Can do everything that she wants. Yeah. I don't know. I'm listen, I'm gonna mani I'm not gonna manifest, but I'm gonna mark this point somewhere in my memory that when I'm sixty, I want to think back at that moment and how I thought I was like so aware about everything already, right? And I was like, mm -hmm. Oh my god, I'm like understanding life. Like, I know what's up. I know everything. Like, I see everything. Like, I have my third eye open, how everyone is Yeah. Seeing. And then when I want to think back exactly at this moment when I'm 60, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, of course you did. <laughs> 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 Look at you now. <laughs> like, that's, that's kind of... So I'm also really looking forward to aging, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I like getting older. Before, it was, I was like, oh, fuck, I'm so old. Life is over. And that's I'm like... That's one thing I... <sighs> Numbers are on the papers, right? I do yeah. not really care about that. But on the other hand, I somehow do. Like, unconsciously, I do. And last time, like, my, my aunt sent me, like, one quote about growing up. And then she told me that I always said when I was a child, I never wanted to grow up. And I still have this. So mm -hmm. I think, for myself, I have a Peter Pan complex. Yeah. Um, Because I still think that way. Like, I do not feel... Not that I not feel like grown up, but I have this, I, I don't even know how to explain it to you. I just, growing up mentally and like spiritually is totally fine for me. And that's mm -hmm. also what I do. But physically it's a problem. Also not like if I get wrinkles or anything, I don't care about this, but some somehow now I started like, realizing okay if i get like these like my wrinkles here and everything mm -hmm. or i need to take care of my skin more now because i'm <laughs> i'm getting older so a bit more sports would be beneficial to keep it good you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's like i don't know if it's more like a physical or a mental thing for me because uh, i'm i love being a child like i love having fun in life and being so without worries you know mm. what i mean mm. so it's a very i don't know i need to read into the peter pan complex more mm -hmm. and i just realized that i think it was two weeks ago when my when my aunt sent me that that quote and said yeah when you were a child you always said you don't want to grow up. <laughs> it's like okay why didn't i want to grow up i yeah, just I want mean, to i need you can to be more careless that. i guess you don't have to worry about that much when you're a child yeah you have people yeah. taking care of you if that makes sense yeah no heavy decisions nobody like you can blame others for for things not working out in your life well as an adult you kind of have to take credit for when something goes yeah i think it was just the the freedom of being in the forest and in the garden whole day <laughs> <laughs> not thinking of anything i think that's it like just driving your bicycle the whole day and enjoying the sun and looking at the stars and be like oh my god they're so beautiful you know mm. uh, i need to dig I deeper in there mean. interesting anyways next thing um having a strong sense of self-worth oh yeah 100 percent. i know I, yeah yeah 100 percent. don't fuck with me i know my worth bish bitch and the last thing, guys, is being in the present moment, which is, I feel like, very hard for a lot uh, of people. Yeah, I'm struggling with I, that. I can't. Yeah. Unless I I'm meditating. That is mm -hmm. the only time. And when I'm, like, mentally for, like, 
let's say I am at a very beautiful spot walking with Mira and Nathan and I'm like, wow, yeah. this is so beautiful. I really want to remember exactly this moment. That, mm-hmm. yes, but I need to be really mindful, if that makes sense. Like, I'm struggling. Like, you know, being anxiety and depressed, not anymore that much, right? But like mm. having this pattern of when you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you have anxiety, mm. you live in the future, right? So you're never in the... In the, in the moment uh, in the moment in the present yeah so i'm a lot like not really in the past anymore at all so i let go mm-hmm. of that i couldn't care less about the past but for me it's a lot about the future so i'm mm-hmm. thinking a lot about like what's gonna be and i'm that, that's probably my biggest problem that i can't like do nothing and enjoy a moment Mm -hmm. like you know like i said oh yeah when i'm on the toilet i'm answering people when i'm like cleaning i need to listen to a podcast like i'm always trying to keep busy i'm never like just sitting outside and like listening to the birds or something unless i'm meditating yeah yeah how is it for you i'm very in the present because i cannot change the past Mm -hmm. I cannot control the future. I can only make it better by being in the present. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. I don't really have this. Obviously, I think about my future every now and or think about my future and think what I want to do or if I want what I want to achieve, like with manifesting and stuff, right? Which I want to get into more again. Mm -hmm. Um, But I never really liked, and I find that question, I find the question very, not stupid, but like, where do you see yourself in five years? It's like, bro, I could be a fucking completely different person in five years. How do I know? It's like, obviously, in five years, I'm 35. um, (laughs) That's about it. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know if I still live in Austria. I don't know if I, where I am at that point in my life, no matter if it's career wise, um mentally or whatever i want to do so i know I, and i understand especially with jobs and everything um or like planning ahead and everything is very important for certain things mm-hmm. but i'm such a spontaneous person unless it's we go to the cinema we go bouldering or whatever <laughs> we do um i like planning these things but when it comes to my own life i let it i just let it happen which is also sometimes, um, which is also something I struggle sometimes with, because that's also where you where you start to float, because nothing yeah. is that much of an or it hasn't that much of an importance for you, but at the same time you just let it happen. So yeah. this is this is something I have to learn to work with or balance still, because mm-hmm. I let. I don't know why, but over the past few years, everything I've been, I've become so neutral to so many things because it's whether, because I don't care that much about certain material things anymore. And I couldn't care less about this shit or just because I'm, I don't know. I'm just so neutral. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling like the, but is it a bad on, thing? That's the thing. That's what I'm questioning myself because I feel like in the middle of both, like I've I've said that so many times already. I feel like in the middle of the sun and the moon. So where am I? Am I the void? Am I, you know what I mean? Am I the one that tries to balance the things? And that's where I, I live in. The, and that's what living in the present means. It's so hard to balance, not the, like not thinking about the past and not thinking about the future but being in the now which i am but then again you question um so much because sometimes you question so much if that is if it's okay not to think too much about this or that you know what i mean yeah yeah but also like what i can do very like what i'm very good at is enjoying moments like yeah no matter if it's just sitting on the balcony or Aww. whatever, I just like being and acknowledging that I'm here now. I really mm. like that. Oh, I need to learn that. You need to teach me. So, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm still trying to understand what I'm doing because <laughs> I I somehow need to think of my future as well, right? Or where yeah, I want yeah, to of be course. Or, 
I mean, but I can help again, you with that if you want. Yeah. Like that, that, yeah. that's the one thing that I'm like, oh yeah, I can give you fucking 15 plans right now. Yeah, or, it's just or help you search for what you want. But like, yeah, that's what I. I just want a little bit of structure for my future, but I do mm -hmm. not want to constantly focus on it because of course, I, you won't be able to enjoy the present. Then, for yeah. example, if you just think too much of the past or the future, for sure. So yeah, this is. Ugh, balancing is hard. <laughs> Holy shit, that was uh, that was a really deep talk. Holy fuck! Mm -hmm. Once again, and I think our longest episode so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, um, I really enjoyed this one, and I think we could talk Same. like a million more times about yeah, that. There's can... so much more to talk about. This. Yeah, we we can Stop we can it. uh talk about like Star Wars and the Force. We could talk oh. about like energy healing. Um to to connect it with the planet itself. Exactly. Your thoughts, Nature, what your thoughts do and everything. Manifestations. So much. Like like all of that kind of stuff. Um anyway, let us know what do you think if you would like to hear us talk about that kind of stuff again i know it's it's really 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 specific we can read the cards for you guys oh, or we should do that, stuff. Like, uh, tarot Wait, i was thinking or something of like that. that yes i was thinking of that we yeah, should why not? we need to talk about this off yeah. podcast off podcast okay guys That's thank you so much for secret. listening we're here chatting again next week thank you for everything may the force be with you <laughs> bye, bye guys <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Derps and Burps podcast. If you enjoyed it, make sure to follow us on Spotify, YouTube, Twitter or Instagram at Derps and Burps. See you online.